you've got to make the decision cameras do you go through the mud or you go around it sometimes it's safer to just go straight through instead of trying to <laughs> scramble around it and then slipping down into it that's literally what can happen <clears throat> and a bit more mud gonna happen ankle deep there canvas ankle deep ankle deep's pretty bad knee deep starts to get really irritating but there are stories out here of waist deep waist deep mud canvas and the only thing stopping you from sinking deeper is your backpack makeshift bridge cambers over this small creek just in case you don't want to get your feet wet Very good balance, yeah? It's good for the small table. Huh? All packed up, ready to go. Maybe we can uh, do this. Day three, Crossing River campsite. Packing up, 6.30 a.m. with a big hike in front of us. Crossing River. We had to cut back some of the bush yesterday so we could make a large enough spot for the tent. Not many people camp at this site. The more popular campsite is about 10 kilometers down the trail.
Everything is dry except our shoes and socks, man. And today, the first step is, as we move away from this river, is into the swamp. You've got about half a kilometre in swamp terrain, then it's back into the muddy bog. Why state mud campers? Makeshift bridge. Day four campers, we're in between designated campsites that are about eight kilometers each way from where we are here. We're running out of energy, had to just pitch this tent right here and next to the trail. The ground is about 80% flat. There's a few completely flat spots where our sleeping mats were positioned inside the tent. Really tight squeeze here. Some of the guy lines are just tied onto small plants that are growing through. Barely enough room to put our equipment here as we pack up. There's the creek down there where we got our water. And that is the Port Davy track, man. Mud, more sections of mud. You barely even see the track on the camera. It goes down there, crosses the creek, continues southwards. Scrambling through the mud has become so difficult. We've just put together these makeshift trekking poles. At the moment, that makeshift trekking pole is being used to support the collapsible bucket. The old sleeping mat. Catching a bit of sun. Drying out. The southwest Tasmanian wilderness. At Bush Channel. Quick look at the ground we've been sleeping on, campers. <laughs> Tent dismantled. So it's a pretty big space. And Hillyburg is a pretty big tent. Normally you could fit maybe two or three tents on this spot. Two or three small tents. You never know, campers, in the future a permanent designated campsite might form here. A bit more flat space over there. Perfect for a campsite, perfect. Not designated on the map, but 
really suitable. Just approaching another campsite here, campers. Believe it or not, this is the trail. If you stand in there, you could end up waist deep in mud. You've got to go around it. Put a blue tape on the tree. Put there probably by government track workers. Another piece of blue tape. Suitable campsite. Two come. Cool. And the only real construction you will see on the entire trail. <laughs> The bridge over Spring River. <clears throat> we haven't seen anyone for about two days, campers. Eight thirty AM, day five. Another really tight squeeze campsite. Such a tight squeeze that we couldn't even fully assemble the Hillyburg. We've had to had it in the vestibule open configuration. <coughs> That's where the whole front of the tent is open. You sleep in there. So lucky it wasn't windy because uh, this configuration you wouldn't want to use in strong wind <clears throat> so as you can see like, there's kind of enough room for the vestibule flap to come down here but right on this spot here is a jumping jack bull ant nest real nasty species really aggressive so if we had have had the vestibule all the way down um, we literally would have had a jumping jack bull ant nest inside the tent as long as you don't bump them, they won't launch an all-out attack. But just not a really nice feeling. Because having the vestibule down would have actually meant driving a tent stake into the nest itself, or just on the edge of the nest. <laughs> that is the type of thing that wakes up the queen. And all the ants come outside to sting you, man. And they have a nasty sting. Everything's ready to pack up. It's a bit of fruit breakfast right there. Freeze dried strawberries, banana, and freeze dried mango. Weighs absolutely nothing. One kilo weighs only 100 grams. That's why we can pack light at Bush Channel. Bathurst Harbour campers, yesterday we were in a boat fishing out there and the current was so strong we actually got dragged um, about 800 metres away from where we were meant to be. We had to paddle back a couple of hours later once the waves and the wind stopped. 
8 a.m. day 7. It's pretty cold this morning, campers. Maybe 8 degrees Celsius. Got the InReach Mini over here. Just getting a bit of uh, weather forecast. We know that uh, there should be virtually no wind today, so it's going to be safe to cross the harbour. Tea and warm water cooking to make our bodies warm. It's really the best thing we can do other than put on extra layers of clothing. Beautiful campsite here, beautiful. Only thing missing here is actual running water cam. It's just down below the campsite is a hole in the ground where we've been getting our water from. The water is quite dirty there, but of course, through, going through the filter, it's nice and clean. We can actually drink it. Sea level. And only about one meter above sea level, probably even less than that actually, maybe only half a meter above sea level, is the water source. Barely even flowing. Just gonna pull some of this water out so you can see. Look how dirty it is, cameras. If I run that through the two-stage filter system that we were using, comes out clean. You do have to run the water through a bandana though before you start filtering it. So it's basically a three-stage filtration system. You would have seen in our previous videos, rigged up next to the tent. Look at all, that. Look at all those little floaties there, man. <laughs> oh, looks disgusting. I wouldn't want to be here without a filter. <clears throat> Plenty of shells on the beach and mussels. <clears throat> Time to pack on out, man. For the final leg of the trail. Back to Malaluk Airstrip. water canvas there's the other side of the narrow crossing which way which way do you think the wind's going the wind is going there And once you reach the other side, canvas, you're not done. There's now three boats on this side, so we're gonna have to drag one of them back across so the next people can pass and then paddle back over with one boat. So there has to be at least one boat on each side at all times. You might have seen a little fiberglass boat on the other side, but that thing's waterlogged. Got three aluminium boats. Dinghies.
either, either way was okay. Cool, so seatbelt's on for the whole flight please. Pretty good conditions, but always a couple of bumps as we go across the ranges, so just nice and tight and low around your waist. Okay. Uh, any questions before we get going? Parachutes. Parachutes, no parachutes Cheers. today. <laughs> Don't have any of that. Um, no life <laughs> Cool. Alright, All right. we'll get to it. Thank you.